Hi, welcome to another episode of The U. I'm Jason Belk, a senior technical advocate with Cisco Learning Certifications. Today, we're going to talk about Jupyter Notebooks for Network Engineers. You might be asking yourself, what's a Jupyter Notebook? Like the planet? No, we're talking about the Python framework that's used to create these interactive documentation websites that allow you to put pieces of code, pieces of markdown, and, and inter intermingle them. They're used very often in scientific papers for people to put their Python code to render out what they were working on and, and, and lots of different data scientists. But we can actually use them for network engineering as well. The great thing about them is they don't care about what type of Python code you're working with. And we can put any type of markdown we want. So really from a network engineering perspective, we can think of it almost as like a method of procedure, a mop, where we can put a step-by-step -step documentation flow explaining what's going on and you use it as a way to encapsulate all the information we're talking about and then have it actually execute and do the automation and talk to the network devices, whether it's making configuration changes, getting operational data, and then rendering that in the notebook for us. If you think about it in a team environment, they'd actually be very helpful for sharing within teams because since it stores all the output in the notebook for you, as you'll see in a few minutes, it also provides a great way for us to then put in version control, say on GitHub, GitLab, within your team's internal Git server. And you could then be able to share all the outputs and be able to have these reproducible steps that are then able to be used within your team and standardizing the, the types of ways you're doing changes. All right, let's get started on our first step. We're going to create a directory, create a virtual environment, and install Jupyter and NetMiko. NetMiko to talk to the network devices, and then Jupyter to then have all of our Jupyter notebook functionality. So we'll first go make directory, Jupyter learn, cd into that directory, use the virtual env command, say we'll say Jupyter vinf, and it creates our um, virtual environment, so the source, the name of that virtual environment, bin, activate. So now we are in that virtual directory and go pip install Jupyter and NetMiko. And now it's collecting all the packages, installing them, and putting that all within our virtual environment. And now that the packages have all been installed, we can actually just use the Jupyter Notebook command that's now available to us to spin up a new Jupyter Notebook in our current working directory. It'll take any of the files and folders and show them within our browser. And it opened up a new browser for us on localhost 8888, and we see our virtual environment um, directory there. But if we want to create now a new notebook within our Jupyter environment, we can go to New, Python 3, and we've created a new notebook called Untitled. So we'll just call this one MOP for method, method procedure. It has the .ipynb uh, extension. So now that we have our notebook all set up, we can actually take a look around. We have cells here. And the cells can be either a code or markdown. The code allows us to execute any Python code, and the markdown allows us to put any documentation we want associated with it. And if we want to run the cells, we click the play button, and you know we can save and export as well. So first, let's take a look at the markdown. So if I put copy and paste some markdown in here, we're using the hashtag to create a heading and a list and some information to say, hey, this is actually going to be a method procedure document on verifying show IP interface brief. And if we render that cell, it will then render into the HTML, and make it really easy for us to see. And this is what I was talking about in terms of the documentation, as you'll see throughout the flow. This is something that gives us context for the code we're doing better than just using code in line inside of the Python file. It makes it easier for people who are first getting started with um, network automation to be able to see what's going on. Okay, and now let's take some code. And I have a DevNet reservable sandbox already ready on a VPN connect to that device. So we have this device 10.10.20.48 with the username and password. Don't put those in your actual environment. So basically this is just creating a dictionary for the Python NetMiko that we also installed to be able to run some code. It's gonna create a device object that then we can then 
also send commands with. But first, we're just defining our variables that later on, if we want to be able to change those variables and reuse this, this notebook, it makes it really nice to have it all at the top for us. So we've run that Python code where basically all it did was just set some variables. It didn't actually produce any output. So we have some config commands, a show IP interface brief command. And now we can actually import NetMiko, import JSON library, and start talking to our network device. So I'm now executing this commands, and it has all of the information stored already in the running memory from the previous step of our device information, our config commands, and our show command. So we, we use the connect handler, unpacking that device object to be able to connect to a de network device, send that show IP interface brief, and then use the text FSM to parse that command and print it all out. So we can see the output was rendered here right below. We have the list of interfaces for show IP interface brief. And then we have the list of um, text FSM parsed uh, interface data. And because now it's in a structured data format, that allows us to do some more um, kind of fancy manipulations in a few later steps. But now we can see first, we're going to actually send some configuration commands. So within NetMiko, we can not only send operational commands, we're doing this all within the Jupyter Notebook just to show you, yes, you can do any type of Python, but we're talking to a network device, which is actually pretty cool. So now that we've talked to the network device and we've sent our conf configuration commands, we can see the output here right below. And we've also done a show IP interface brief to show that we've added a new interface called loopback1337. And we've now that we've added this interface, we can also do some... Um, verification on all of that data that we parsed. So let's say we took some of that pre-output JSON that we had parsed from the text FSM, and we can extract the values from our, our dictionary to say here, the interface interface name has an IP address of I, the IP address and inter interface of the status. So that creates a nice little list of all of the interfaces, whether they're up, their IP address, and you can think for people who are doing changes, it'd be nice to have this type of information rendered for you as you're doing your change. And we can do the same thing for the post interface status. So we can see now we have loopback one, two, three, seven on our interfaces. And we can actually analyze the data. So we can take some markdown to kind of break up this code and tell people what we're working with. And you'll notice that what I did there was I actually put some markdown in a cell that was marked as code. And so it threw an error saying, hey, that's actually supposed to be um, code and it looks like markdown. And so now that I put markdown in the markdown cell, it says now we can analyze the data. So giving some more context to people who are looking through our code and we can make sure this is a code uh, cell. And we can start actually counting up the interfaces that were up and down before that change. So just doing some, some basic math, we, we are counting the times we saw up and down and then printing out that we saw five interfaces up before the change, and we saw five interfaces up after the change and no new interfaces down. So one other neat thing that we can do within uh, Jupyter Notebooks is actually also visualize the data. So let's make this next cell also a markdown cell to kind of showcase our documentation flow. And I've pasted it in and, and rendered that cell, and we'll have the next cell be our code cell, which is gonna use the markdown module within the IPython library. So we've, I've created a Python function that allows us to take some text variables that have some markdown tables. And then we take that same information we saw iterating in complexity from the previous step, where previously we just had a text statement of saying, here's an interface and some information, but now we can insert that into a markdown table. And we can call that function twice, once for the pre-change and once for the post-change using that pre and post output JSON variable that we still have in the running memory. And then it renders it into markdown and renders it into the cells below. So not only just having straight lines, but now we can actually have HTML tables rendered automatically from our network changes. So th for me, there's other features within Jira Notebooks in terms of doing matplotlib and graphing. But oftentimes for network engineers, you know, we already have monitoring tools that do that type of thing. But I think it's really neat to be able to have network engineers who are able to then put their sequence of steps within a method of procedure document that's dynamic and interactive and reproducible. Because if you think about it, if we go back to the top of this whole Jupyter Notebook, we could swap out the IP address. We could swap, uh, you know, have a better way of doing username and password, have different config commands. But we could keep the same structure in terms of doing the same verification commands, creating those uh, markdown tables, and do a completely different change. So this gives a reproducibility 
and a way for us as network engineers to be able to document our workflows and share that with other people. And so I, I think this is a really neat way for us to think about using documentation to improve our network automation flows. And thank you for joining another episode of The U.